Previously on Boston Med. Can you get me an LMA from the... Hand me the tube, hand me the tube. Because of the delay, she's going to suffer. I understand, but... It's really not acceptable. You'd have nothing left in me. A thousand miles, it's hard to hear you Through the static, searching for something to say Boston, home to three of America's greatest hospitals, Mass General, the Brigham, and Children's. These are the stories of the men and women who work in them. I've never seen a guy as sophomore nurses than you on rounds. Oh, really? Bob, are you asking me out in front of this camera? Cold blue, BD cold team. Does anyone feel a pause? She's at dialysis, she arrested. According to the staff there, they did about 10 minutes of CPR and intubated her. So this woman was at dialysis at another hospital and she cardiac arrested. So they got her heart rate back, so got her pulse well. back. Now she's here. Just set up for an A-line and we'll get her heart rate. You want to try 22? Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that nurses just pass out medicines, put people on bedpans, wipe their butts and that's it, you know? But it's really so much more. She's awake and she's biting the tube. You guys, she's breathing down to 39. So why don't we start CPR? Right now, she went up to 55. Does she have a pulse? Yeah, I was in the room with the family and they're pretty, you know, okay. Can you know what, guys, she's DNR. She's DNR? Let me go in. So the family's outside. Family's outside. She was resuscitated when she wasn't supposed to be resuscitated. All right, we're done. Yeah, we're done. This poor woman was do not resuscitate, and for whatever reason, at the other hospital, they resuscitated her, like did CPR, gave her the meds, intubated her, and the, all the while she didn't want any of that. Okay. So let's stop what we're doing. Let's clean her out, and let's let her family come and spend some time with her. Yeah. Somebody dropped the ball and didn't respect her last wishes, which is sad because that's not the way I would want to go. Doctors are supposed to keep their emotions under control. This can be especially difficult in pediatrics. She's still pretty crackly now and wheezy. Yeah. For example, how do you tell an expectant mother whose baby has a serious heart condition that it'll be okay? At 18 weeks, they sent me for my first ultrasound and the tech looked at me and she said, Renee, I have to be honest with you. The reason that I'm looking at the heart so long is because it doesn't look right. Something's wrong with the baby's heart. And I just remember my heart dropping at that point and I had my mom and my sister with me and I reached over and I grabbed my mom's hand and I just started to fall apart. I just was devastated and I thought, I need to talk to my husband. Jacob's in the army fighting in Iraq. He's been gone my entire pregnancy, but he's working really hard to get home next week for the birth of our son, Sam. Even though my son has a broken heart, this baby is perfect and he's gonna make it. And I can't have any doubt that he's not gonna make it. So how are you feeling? Really tired yesterday, but I'm doing better now. All right. Well, you know the drill. We've been following Renee uh, with a, actually a prenatal diagnosis of what's called hypoplastic left heart syndrome. This is a severe form of congenital heart disease. Sam's heart is maybe no bigger than my thumb. Well, let's see if we can find his head. He looks more like my husband. <laughs> Many babies don't survive, even after corrective surgery under the best conditions. But we're optimistic that we'll uh, have a great outcome.
gonna miss it. Just in case it's Jake. Hello? Hi, hon. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Guess what? You're giving me two weeks to leave. I'm coming home. What? Hopefully I'll be leaving like within a day. I'm just afraid you're not gonna make it home in time. You know, I'll get there, I'll get back in time. That's what you think. This baby might not wait till the 12th, Jacob. <laughs> They say he doesn't do any drugs. Just drink. Just drink a gallon of vodka real quick. Hey, buddy. Blame it on the a a a a a alcohol. And there's the alcohol. Oh, wow. Apparently, he did not enjoy my singing. So, he's going to get nursed back to health by our angels. It's got to be the worst feeling to go out for some drinks or like think you're drinking with your buddies and then wake up in the emergency room. No idea how you got there in a diaper. Uh, Mr. Who was drinking vodka with his friends oh became unresponsive. So the friends called 911 and brought him here. Okay. Friends report that this is not his first time having to be hospitalized for alcohol issues. He came in, vomited all over himself, also was incontinent several times. The family wouldn't come in, okay. didn't want to see him, nothing. Said okay. that they're done. I had to deal with a really tough funeral this week. I don't know how I ended up here, but I mean, I'm fine. You've, you've told me your sob story. I know. It's okay, okay so stop. You can tell me as many times as you want, but you're not leaving right now. So stop. And I have three hours to get my exam to my teacher. Honestly, honestly nothing. You you almost died last okay. night. So I don't care that you have an exam due. You, you should have thought of that before you went out and you got so drunk and it's, that you like, almost choked on your own vomit. I understand that. It's not, so no. I know. It's no. Not, honestly, so, it's really tough. Okay. Show some sympathy. <laughs> As long as I know I'm a good nurse and I'm doing what's best for him, he can tell me to go F myself all he wants. I liked him much better when he was <laughs> unconscious. Kid's got a scholarship that he's just puking away on the mass general floor. <laughs> Have you heard in here where this incision was made? No. No. I like to think that I'm outstanding in the operating room and I give a good surgery, but that I also do extremely good patient care. Oh, wow. He's a good healer. <laughs> yeah, or, or you had a great surgeon. Or, that, that, that. <laughs> but the best part of it is being with the patient through the whole journey from the beginning. How's the weather in, in the Midwest? Oh, oh it was snowing it was, yesterday. It was snowing. No, please don't. I'm looking at a job in the Midwest. Oh, Cleveland's a fun city. You make eye contact and you form a bond, and they decide that they're going to put their trust in your hands. 77-year-old scheduled for a left uh, extra pro-luminectomy with intraepidemic chemo on Thursday. You know, in cancer, there are patients for life. So if you uh, remove someone's lung cancer, you will see them on a regular basis for the rest of their lives. I tell people I married my soulmate and my best friend. Well, yeah, we've, we've had a good 54 years, and this is probably the toughest thing we've ever faced together. Hi. One of those doctors. Yeah. John Daniel, I'm Dr. Sugar Baker's chief resident. Okay. Charlie Chu has a cancerous mass growing around his entire lung. So here's your normal right lung. And on the left here now, you can see the mesothelioma around the left lung. Mesothelioma is a, probably a, one of the most aggressive cancers you can have. It has been related to asbestos exposure. And you have known asbestos exposure? I was on the destroyer for three years. Given our age, everything was wrapped in asbestos years ago. Obviously, we can't go back and change the exposure that no, you we had, cannot. but we can okay. get this thing out. I and expect a good sewing job. This is my soulmate here. Of three. course, of okay. course. We understand. So, this is my best friend here. It only takes as long as it takes. My husband's coming home from Iraq for a few short weeks. This will be Jake's first time seeing me since I am pregnant. It's landing! It's landing! It's landing. It's landing. It's landing. <laughs> I've thought it through my head, like, how am I going to greet him? But then all the images of, like, in the movies, how they, like, run into each other's arms and, like, you know, he picks her up. Like, obviously, that might be a little bit more complicated in this situation. <laughs> he's coming, he's coming, he's coming! He's coming. Your 
intimidating coming here. I always felt like, you know, I had something to prove. Will someone let me know when it's been another minute, please? I really had to work on trying to be someone that can inspire confidence. I have to work on being a little bit more cockier because people actually respond to that. Raquel, yeah. needle both sides, please. All right, let's stop for a rhythm check. Hold impressions, please. And someone feeling for a pulse? I am. That looks like Via. Yep, he's back in Via. We need to shot. All right. We're going to want these containers. We're all clear. 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 Cl
What happens normally, this vessel closes after babies are born. So there's no way for blood to get to his lower body and the rest and of his body, die. and he would die. Mm -hmm. We don't have the ability to cure this, but through a series of three operations over the first three, two to three years of life, um, we can get Sam to a place where he is um, almost running around like other kids. I don't know, it's probably hard to answer, but what are chances of uh, complications in the surgery? The biggest um, complication that we worry about is that not all babies, even under the best conditions, uh, make it through the first surgery. It's a lot emotionally on me, um, from everything coming back home to uh, being with Renee for the first time in nine months, seeing her pregnant, to seeing Sam's condition. It is tough. Yeah, it was pretty scary. <laughs> Today is surgery day for Charlie Chu. He's 77, he's a robust guy, and we want to give him more time. We are gonna lie you flat. Are you okay lying flat? Yeah. We're gonna give you some oxygen to breathe. Sure. Uh, this worry. is my soul. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. I approached me 60, and I want 65. That's the tumor. Uh -huh. It's just crushing the lung. It's coming right around, just crushing it. Dr. Sugarbaker has done more of this operation than anyone in the world. Right, right now we're just uh, walking uh, upstairs to uh, check in with the family before surgery on Mr. Chu. I just want to touch base this morning before we, you know, get started formally. It is a devastating problem, but it's not a hopeless problem. And there's many, many people who survive it and do well. And that means hope is now in the equation. That means a great deal. Charlie Chu is a very down-to-earth guy. You know, he's one of these salt-of-the-earth type individuals who's uh, you know, served our country and worked very hard, and we're going to do the best we can to attack this disease. Officer, please, to help with the patient. Well, she's kind of just wandering the halls. Thanks. Bye. Put me in my bedroom. What are you crazy? In your bedroom. There has to be a full moon. Is there? Elizabeth, who's her doctor? The short girl that I just told needed to All right, I'm on it. Every year, you get new residents fresh out of med school, and sometimes getting them to believe you and listen to you and to get that you know what you're talking about is the hardest part. So we need meds for her. She's I'm pushing, because security's coming. To She's going to be put into bed, probably restrained. Why don't we start with one? She's in maybe. How about 2.5? Because it's one, it's five per one ml, so. She's an old lady. Um, OK, let's try with two. I think 2.5, that's good. OK, thank you. Yes, I know I don't have that fancy MD at the end of my name tag. Elizabeth, so 2.5 of Haldol, but it would make people's lives a whole lot easier if they would just listen to us. Do not touch me. Okay, don't touch me. I am not. Right, right. Yes, that is my mother. Okay. Okay. A lot of the time, patients can be nasty, and it's like, I'm just trying to help you. Go for it. The patient was trying to climb out of bed. The daughter was just making the situation worse. I asked her to leave. She refused. I said, I'm not leaving my mother. And I said, you're making this worse. Your mom's going to get hurt. She's getting so, you're making her upset, and you're compromising her care. I need someone in here with VN9, and I need someone with Elizabeth in 7. So can you call back up? This one first. What's wrong with you? Calm down. Tell him to let go of my car. Call the police. These are the police. These are over here. We're in the uh, pre-op room waiting to go. Uh, into surgery. I think the fact that it's cancer, you're always afraid. You just want it to be done. You want him to get out of the surgery and, and start doing what you need to get him back home. Today will be a relatively short day for me because I'll be out of it. The long day will be for them because they have to wait. The goal of the operation is to remove everything that this tumor comes into contact with. We remove the lung, the heart sac, and the diaphragm. 
We need 45 with two refills on that boat. So we need a Harkin ready. So the plan here now is to divide the major vessel to the heart. What changed my life and my career goals is when my dad himself had heart surgery. I'm gonna need pickups in a second. The surgeon, he came to me, he told me what he had done with my dad. He put my dad's chest back together with wires and bypassed these vessels. Chad? That really had a you know, lasting impression for me. We got to clamp it and just check your PA real quick. Is it closed? Yeah, it's closed. closed. Yeah. It's a large piece of the tumor right here, you can see. Like a rind, something not, not human. All right, success. Suction. Excellent. More saline. We've got the lung out, the tumor out. We're going to go ahead and patch, put the patches in. We have endo 45 vascular ready. If you sew the diaphragm in wrong or you sew the pericardium in wrong, the patients can die literally when you change their position on the operating room table. I always pray for the surgeons. That God guides their hands. One more stitch, please. <laughs> Not a whole one. So, uh, you know, everything's going very well. Ouch. It was a large tumor. However, it did not invade things around it. So far, we're just where we need to be. We couldn't be in any better shape. Thank God. Hey, you got makeup on. I always wear makeup, okay? Always. Did they take the my pants off? Yeah. No, that's a 20. Oh. <laughs> Did you ever what? think that you would have this many young, beautiful women ripping Never. your clothes off? Never. Never, Never. Huh? It's like a dream come true for you. <laughs> it's really, really cute. I love old, cute old men. I love to flirt with them. We got to get you kind of quickly on the monitor. No, 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 not off the bed. All right. Undress while you're talking. I've oh. never been asked by a good-looking woman to dress okay. fast in my life. And to I'll undress fast. That's her husband was coming in the door. <laughs> well, I've never had a man undress for me this quickly, so. Uh. <laughs> this is what it's going to look like walking down the aisle. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Right this way, straight. Renee woke me up this morning. It's about 2.55 in the morning. She was in the bathroom and she said, my water broke. Then he just looked panicked. <laughs> <laughs> and then we called the doctor and they said to come on in. <laughs> Renee's baby will be delivered next door at the Brigham. And shortly after birth, we'll bring him over to the cardiac ICU at Children's, where we'll perform the first of his three operations. Look at all these people. It's a birthday party. What's up, baby? <laughs> Are we ready to go? Here we go. Right. Behind your legs. Yep, take breath in. Nice big push. Break down. Hard as you can. Keep going. There you go, honey. A little more. A little more. A little more. A little more. Perfect. Good for you. It's good. Cool. You see the head? You seem so terrified. I can hear you over my shoulder going, oh my god. It's a big push. There you go. A little more. Good job. Some down. A little further. A little further. A little further. Good for you. Big push. Good. There you go. <laughs> Sammy. Good for you. Uh, right. 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 Hi, Mom. Hi. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Mama. Sammy. Hello. Hello, Janice. Hello. 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 Hello but he has hyperplastic left heart syndrome, and there's a real risk there. If we didn't do anything, he wouldn't make it at all. You sweetie buddy. I feel like his surgeries are gonna go fine. <laughs> do they have to take him? Yeah. I'll go with you, Sammy. To see additional scenes from Boston Med, go to bostonmed.abcnews.com. and loving God, we thank you for this, your precious little boy, Samuel. We ask you that this little baby will not be stressed, he will not be afraid because you're holding him. 
Amen. Before we fix Sam's heart, uh, we need to get an exact picture of how the blood circulates within the heart and the great vessels. And we need to understand exactly what kind of abnormality we're dealing with. What we've done here is inject dye into the baby's heart to see how the blood is flowing. We hope that this will tell us what kind of surgery we'll need for Sam. This worries me, this uh, connection. We're making this up, right? We're completely, we have never made this diagnosis before. Even for a baby with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, Sam's uh, abnormality is much more serious and much more complicated. And we won't know until we get into the operating room what kind of operation uh, we need to do to fix it. It is a very difficult situation. We have more data, we have more information, but it has not allowed us to go one way or another. It's still okay. It's still okay, and what we're trying to do is to make the best decision we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the operating room and we're going to inspect the heart from the outside. Uh, and unfortunately, we are exactly in this uh, in this gray zone that I was hoping we wouldn't be in. But Clearly these not. babies that are in the gray, like some of them make it, right? Definitely. None of us are giving up, but we're yes. more worried. Yeah. It's almost hard to bond with him because I'm afraid that I'm that I might lose him and it's like hard because I don't want to get too close to him in case he doesn't make it. But I also don't want to not get close to him. It's not that the stakes have changed, but it's just that Sam's in a higher risk group. It's a tough situation, but it's not hopeless. And if anybody can fix it, we can. Can I say goodbye, buddy? Love you, buddy. Tonight he was assaulted. It sounds like he just seen me ripping into someone's car and they called him. They came up. Hi, my name is Keenan Patel. One of the doctors I'm gonna be taking care of you, okay? I wanna go home. We have to examine you head to toe, okay? Lay back, just stay there and let the doctor take He's care of you. We'll take care of it, okay? Here. So the first there's arriving there's unit there. found him super no in the street. Just doctors. There are no police. I can't say there's no police. Are there any police? <laughs> it's like there are no police here. I didn't want to be evaluated. Just worried yeah, if the cops are here. <laughs> I am busting out of here. It'll be fun to hang out with my friends. I just haven't seen them in a long time. I can't wait. It'll be fun. I imagine this would be like good for hangover. <laughs> My friends, my family, they've tried to set me up here and there, and it's generally been unsuccessful. I've been on like IndianMatches.com and stuff, and I've just met like the weirdest guys, like guys that are like so boring, like you want to run out of there. Guys that have been arrested, like, I mean, like, it's just no good. I think it's awesome. If I was single, I would be on it in a heartbeat. There have been a couple of people that I've cared for that things just didn't work out, and I'm, like, dating kryptonite. Honestly, I think, like, you're ridiculously hot. I think that, like, you have an amazing personality, and, like, I th hopefully you'll meet somebody more sake to you. I know. <laughs> Cheers. Get myself free. I feel sick to my stomach. So it's all emotional stress, which is something I'm really not used to. I mean, I've been through a lot of high stressful environments, but emotional stress is, this is nothing I'm like it. It's actually wiped me out. I've been pretty tired. This is highly unusual that we have to make a decision during surgery. May we start? Yes. We'll make the, the final decision once we look at the heart. It blows my mind when I think about what they're actually going to do to him today. I mean, I think that we definitely did the right thing, and I think that Sam's going to do big things in his life. I really do. Look at that. Look at that. See that? Yeah. So he has a large amount of fistulae on the left. 
Now that we're looking at Sam's heart, it's clear how to proceed. We'll be putting bands on and restricting the amount of blood flow that goes to the lungs. What I'm worried about is that the heart muscle is strong enough to support this operation. Uh, blood pressure increase. Nice response to the band. Huh? Yeah. Now going to be tying down the band. Okay. Hey, all goes well. We should be up there within 25 minutes. Thank you. Good. All right. So you did well with the bands. All right, I'm going to go talk to the parents. Hi. Good. All right, so we have good news. We've done the bands. He's, very, he's done very well. We're going to watch him and stabilize him. And, you know, this is a, a journey, and there's many, many steps, and we've started off the right way. Okay. All right, okay. Okay. Console page yourself forwarded to me? I'm not home very much at all. And so I do feel bad that I've neglected my family over the last few years. Any transplants or perforations or whatever, come in tonight, give me a call. Wow, honey, you're all spiffed up. My wife is a jewel because she knows that uh, my job brings me a lot of satisfaction and I couldn't do anything else. A little on transplant in the morning. Yeah. What does that mean for you? Anything in a dance recital? I don't know. She's gonna be crushed if you can't come. We'll see. A lung transplant has come in, so he's gonna get a couple hours of sleep and go back. And so hopefully he can make it for Hannah's dance recital tomorrow at one o'clock. <laughs> Transplants are tough because they're unpredictable. They always come in in the middle of the night and nothing ever goes as scheduled. So it's 6 a.m. Hopefully we can be done by you know, at least 11 o'clock. Okay. I called you. We need a up. vascular clamp. At this point, we've gone as far as we can. We're just sitting here waiting for Dr. Cam. Yeah. It's a recital dress, and we have flower dance. It's kind of beautiful. Today is Hannah's ballet recital. John is at the hospital doing a lung transplant, and I'm really hoping that he can make it to the dance recital because it means a lot to Hannah. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and uh, cut it out. Meanwhile, Rose and Dr. Camp are going to prepare the lung back. <laughs> so we'll see if we can get him out of here in time to go to his recital. Your daddy loves you very, very much, and he's doing his best job to try to make it here, okay? Where is he? He is at the hospital. There was someone that was very sick that needed his help. Uh, I'm in trouble. I mean, we're going to be done in 10 minutes, but we still have to wake the patient up and take the patient up to the ICU, so. John? Hello? Hello? We're at the recital. Where are you? I'm still here. I think you can come right now. What time do you think she's going to go? She's going to go probably like 110. Okay, I don't think I can make it then. All right, well, do the best you can, sweetie, okay? Doesn't look like he's going to make it. Hannah had been practicing now for this mm -hmm. recital for a whole year, and it was very important to her. And so I really wanted to be there. Can you do me a favor and come down and, and uh, help me take this patient up? My daughter has a recital. I just want to try to make it. Thanks, man. That's good. What a nice friend. Go. Yeah. Don't get flowers. Hurry. Yeah. Oh, hey, honey. I just want to let you know, you know, she has a finale where she comes out and bows. Right, we're going to try to come, but anything you can do to delay. You're on your way?
some flowers. You look so pretty. You did such a good job, honey. I love you. Are you wearing makeup? That was pretty neat. She was happy, and it's nice to see her smile. To hear more of the music from Boston Med, go to bostonmed.abcnews.com. I definitely feel like a mom now. Before I was couldn't even focus. I was so distracted by everything else that was going on. Tough guy, huh? Hey, Sam. I couldn't imagine doing this without Jake. Having him here has made all the difference in the world. But you know, time is flying by, and he's gonna leave soon. It's pretty scary. How much you love your son and be so scared for him. I think the first step that we've taken now with with Sam are positive. You know, we're not, by any means, we're not there yet, but he's done extremely well, and he's going home. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't believe we have a child and we're taking it home. I know, yeah. fun. Take care. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? I'm scared too, don't worry. Back in that thing up. Going back to Iraq. How you doing? Hi. What's the final destination say? Uh, Iraq. Any one of these check-in machines can get you through. Really pray for my husband's health and well-being through this whole time. Really sad to go. It was really hard saying bye this morning, but um, hopefully I'll be coming home a little early. Uh, my chain of command has been really supportive of Sam, his condition. Got some pictures to take back with me. He'll probably grow a lot when I'm gone. This was us in our sunglasses. I'm gonna miss him. Just gotta show him off. We'll okay. see you, Dad. I'm excited. I feel like I got the perfect job. I'm going to be heading off to California. I'll be in attending. I'll be working four days a week. And it feels good. It's like I'm 30. I'm a professional. I'm going somewhere warm. Ladies, if I can have you button a couple of buttons for you. I know, huh? In the back room. I was one of the ones that didn't think I was actually going to make it through. You're graduating. Don't be scared. Come on. <laughs> you got Ready? One, two, and three. Welcome, everyone, to the graduation ceremony of the class of 2009. I'll be the first physician in my family. My parents are ridiculously proud to the point where it's almost embarrassing. But it lasted for five seconds before they were like, yeah, so when are you getting married? Pina Patel. my most anxious moments, I gather my strength from knowing that I am intrinsically half of my parents. My father is my hero. The day of my birth, my parents were convinced that I was meant for wonderful things. I came from just a very humble background. My parents grew up with virtually nothing. I never had to worry about Pina. She would just worry for herself. <laughs> and for everyone else. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. I guess it's good for everyone in their lives to have a little bit of struggle because then you never know how sweet it is to be at the end. I finally got it. arrived. I have survived. And I'm going to go to the next stage.
coming in. He has massive internal bleeding. Spike another bag of Stanley. Shut up, I'm big. Oh. I had a seizure. I think about my son's brain surgery. All hell could break loose. Who has dated somebody you've worked with? If it's a cute nurse, and old nurse is honing in on you. It was disastrous. This is embarrassing. I'm not comfortable with this case. No, it's not that I don't trust you. To purchase Boston Med on DVD, go to abcnewsstore.com.